it is two o'clock, and I think that means it's time for us to be ready to rock and roll. So if you're in the room, please make sure you've signed in. And Ron or Russ, one of you two, please take take roll for the folks who are uh, on the Zoom call, if you would, please. Okay. Okay. We'll get that. Got that, Russ? Yes, sir. We'll do. All righty. Thank you. Well, welcome to the uh, to the Vision Eight meeting for September. No, wait, November, November twentieth, twenty twenty one. Goodness, goodness. My my Indy Junction polo shirt arrived today. Yeah, I actually it arrived a couple of days ago, so I thought I'd wear it. Um, if you don't look closely, you'll think it's a Division Eight polo shirt. But what can I say? You know, the logo is a little bit different, and we got one slide here to talk about that. So uh, I'm not going to cover hybrid meeting housekeeping notes because there's nobody new on the on the call except Dave, and Dave knows all this anyway. So we're good to go on that. Uh, new members and visitors, uh, I'm going to let Russ, of course, introduce our clinician later in the meeting. I don't think we have any other visitors. Uh, we don't really have a new member this month, but Brian Weir has re-railed. Uh, he was out for a year or so, whatever, and and he's back in. So woohoo! Hopefully, we can get him on to a call or in in the meeting uh, sometime here in the near future. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting as they are posted on the website? Mark Norman, second. Bill Lynch, thank you. Any objections to that? We'll mark them as approved. And the treasurer's report. Thank you. Hello, Rick. Hi. Pretty good. How are you doing? Ron, can you mute Bob? Thank you. Yeah. Um, like a lot of people in the uh, in the division, uh, the treasurer's been a little busy the last last month. Uh, contrary to what it's been the last uh, several months and during COVID, but at any rate, uh, on the expense side for this month, any questions? Any questions from anybody in the room? Any questions from anyone online? Do we have a motion to approve the treasurer's report as submitted by Mike? Bill Lynch, a second. Okay. Cecil Stewart, a second. Cecil Stewart, a second. Any objections, comments, historical allegory? Cool beans, they are approved. Thank you very much. I don't think Rick Weir is online. Yeah, he is. Oh, he is, okay, he must have sneaked in while I was out doing other stuff. So Rick, you are on. Rick Weir? Rick, we can't hear you, you're not muted. Mike, can you cover it? Yeah. As you. Uh, you see on your screen here, uh, Rick Geertz, uh, one of our members, had a horrendous month, uh, lost a grandson and a brother-in-law in rapid succession. Not a good deal at all. Connor Geertz and Steve Statler. Uh, like I said, uh, both uh, relatives of Rick Geertz. And then uh, here within the last Two weeks, we lost one of our super members, Mr. Bill Edwards. Uh, we made a, uh, like I mentioned in the financial report, made a donation to the uh, Gilda, Gilda's Club uh, Foundation in his name. Um, and as far as I know, that's it for the member welfare report for this month. Yes, sir. That's all I know of also. Thank you for, uh, for, for taking that on for, for Rick. Weird. Let's hope. Uh, let's hope this next month is a little calmer. Yeah, really. Mark Norman is in the room, and uh, I think that uh, I think he's going to come up forward and do his report. And Ron is going to flip the cameras around here a little bit. Well, the big thing for this month is uh, our superintendent Fred has earned a merit award for scenery for the Pikeville. Well, yeah, and there is your work for that. And of course, master builder for scenery. He's completed the requirements there. Oh, why don't you go here and do that? Is it, that's where Barbara usually stands. Oh, well, Barbara's not here to do this. Well, there we go. Does. All right. Yeah. We, you know, both. Just like, okay. Oh, you like that. Congratulations, Fred. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you sure? Okay. <laughs> Never know. Because <laughs> if you don't do it right, you know, Barbara's going to talk to you. 
Okay. There we go. All right. And then the other part of the report is oh, go ahead. Thank you. There's, there's been a there's a flurry of activity. People say they're going to be calling to have things evaluated. So please call, email. But let's get it get, get it going. Okay. Thank you, sir. So the photos I have up on the screen here are uh, of the current Pikeville switching layout. If the last time you saw it was during the last train show about three years ago, there's been a little bit of work done on it since then. Um, had to have something to do. Huh? Yeah, right. So anyway, all righty. Barry. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. For our Charlie Keeling modeling contest this month, we had displays. And um, displays can come in any size, any type of situation, whether it's module, T-track, the whole works. So as last month, we had three entries. So again, for two months in a row, everybody that entered was a winner. And the third place went to Rick Gears. So Rick, along with congratulations, we do send our heartfelt condolences to you and your family. And a big thank you for really good work on the other side of the tracks module. Which reminded me, I grew up on the other side of the tracks in Fullerton, California, so it felt strangely like home that we had there at, the, <laughs> at that module there. So. And then for second place, we had Ed Brennan, and he had a diorama that he built. And as often is the case with us, he now has integrated that into his layout. So congratulations to Ed. And first place this month is for Bob Frankrone with his switching module. Many of us have seen this module at shows over the years. Uh, Bob has taken it to a whole nother level. So congratulations on some really good work for all of our modelers this time around. Now, next month, of course, is our Christmas banquet. So we will not have a contest, but in January, we're back at it again with freight cars. So now's a good time during the holiday season to get some great freight cars ready for the contest. Thank you, sir. Russ, Russ, Russ. Yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, today, uh, we're pleased to have uh, Dave Ackman uh, from the uh, St. Louis area, and he's going to give us a, a, a neat uh, talk on creating billboards with styrene. So uh, we're, we're pleased to have uh, Dave with us and more on, on him in just a little bit. Um, this has been a, a real fun uh uh, item that we've had uh, for a, a, off and on for a number of months, but the next bull session will be next month on the 11th. Uh, just remember it's virtual only, and it'll be hosted by uh, Mark Hedge and uh, Ron Ellison. Uh, we've had some real fun conversations over the past uh, sessions there. So uh, the only thing that we ask is that uh, it is just railroading. It can be either models or the one-to-one -one scale, but uh, we do need to keep it just railroading uh, bull uh, uh, questions, sessions. <clears throat> um, in two months, and like Fred was saying, heavens, uh, January already, uh, we'll have a gathering on the uh, 8th of, uh, uh, of January, and it too is a virtual only, and we'll have Steve Lasher and Fred uh, giving us a talk, uh, it'll be a surprise on what it will be, and perhaps that's right. I'm not telling anybody what it is, and, but it'll be a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, next, Fred. And uh, a week after that, we will have our uh, monthly uh, meeting, and that will be uh, hybrid, just like we're doing today, and uh, we'll have. Uh, uh, Bob Frank Rowan doing Railroad Depot. So that should be another uh, fun uh, clinic to listen to. So. I think Ron's going to give us a little recap and then a preview. 
Yes, if you all remember, I barely remember last Saturday, we had a train show and it was our most successful train show ever. We had 451 attendees, paid attendees through the gate, which is about 11 more than I believe our other highest total was, which I don't recall when that was, it was two or three years ago. And it was a very much a financial success as well. We had a nice tidy profit after having no profit for two years. So there will be a official financial report on the train show forthcoming. We're scrubbing a few final details. But I also would like to take this time to thank a bunch of people, some of who I thought might be here today. Bob Johnson, for one, bringing his new layout to the show, and the Quezon's group for bringing their modular layout. Uh, Bruce was there with the T-Track folks with a nice layout. It was just three of them put a nice layout together, including Joe Martin. Joe's, of course, working at scale today. But a, a tremendous effort by a lot of folks to bring this all together. The success was made possible by everyone pitching in. And speaking of pitching in, if we could change slides, Fred, our next show was Saturday, March 19th, same time, same place. And we need the same amount of help or more. Part of the reason the show is successful is because of the service that we offer our dealers and the public, which is thanks to our members stepping up and volunteering, which is much appreciated by me, by the board of directors, and I'm sure by everyone who shares in the profit in the division. Thank you, Fred. You bet. Thank you, Ron, for all you do to uh, keep us straight on the uh, train show. I know yeah. it's a challenge. Fred, Steve, yes. let me interrupt here for a second. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think a huge uh, reason that we have such a successful train show in no short order is the leadership that uh, <clears throat> Mr. Ellison provides us and, uh, you know, gathering, you know, all the cats, herding all the cats, all the volunteers, everything that needs to be done. And uh, between him and Mark with the tables, I think we have uh, excellent leadership and that's uh, in no short order should be recognized. Thanks for your comments, Bob. Anybody else want to jump in there? All righty, let's move on then. I'm gonna... Quick reminder, and the biggest reason I've thrown this in here is because the registration goes up on the 31st of December. And this is the last chance I have to remind you in person uh, about Indy Junction 2022. We put information out there. Go to the indyjunction2022.org website. There's information out there. There's more information being added in there. Uh, probably within the week, we'll have the a, lit, a short list of the first cut of clinics. Remember, we're going to have over 70 clinics, uh, NMRA clinics, and probably a very close number of RPM clinics going during this show. Of course, it is a four-day show, and then the train show at the end is three days. That's what makes it look like it's five days. But it's really Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday for the convention itself. And then the train show is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Wednesday morning on May 18th, clinic start. May 18. Yep, May 18 through 22. So May 18, Wednesday morning, 9 o'clock, first clinics kick off. Boom. And within about, about probably within the next week, we'll have a basic schedule out there. You could go through and figure out what the schedule is now, but we'll have a good grid out there within about a week. Uh, so you can kind of see how all the timings are and so forth to help you plan at least. It won't be terribly detailed. Uh, if you're looking at the clinic detail, you go to the clinics area and look in there. Otherwise, this thing would be like 80 pages long if we put all the detail for everything in there. Uh, contests and all the other things. But you can see the prices up there. Again, uh, 85 bucks through the 31st of December. $25 for family registration, so you can 
Bill, you can bring Ruthie, you can bring the grandsons, uh, you can bring the nieces, uh, all for one low rate of $25 total, okay? Of course, you know, that's a bunch of hotel rooms. So um, go to the convention website. You can register through there for the uh, convention hotel also. If you go check around on the convention hotel, you'll see that parking is $9 a night. Not true if you are an Indy Junction 2022 registrant. It is free for us. Quick look at Division 8 membership. The official number from the NMRA is we have 124 people in the division. You know where I'm going with this, right? We have 125. When we got the, red, the uh, spreadsheets last, this last month, our membership director, director was going through it and noticed that there was a name missing. Guess whose name was missing? Stan White's, the membership guy. <laughs> so he made a couple of calls and they said, well, you're dead. <laughs> You've been moved to the deceased roles. So we're getting that fixed, but I'm like, really, guys, you know, well, we don't we don't tell you guys all the issues we've had with all the membership rosters over the years. But there was a time that they actually did bring someone who would passed away two years earlier back to the active role as well. Like, how does this happen? Like, well, somebody must have submitted something. So anyway, 125 folks, anywhere from a couple months to 57 years, 11 months now and so on and so forth. So as we've been working our way down the list, we're down to the 25 to 29 years. Don Fowler, 25 years. Mike Berry, yay, 26. Daryl Arend, 27. You know, you all know Daryl, right? He's the guy with the purple trains. Okay. And Bill Lynch, life member, 27 years. Woo-hoo! So congratulations to all you guys. Yay. That actually wraps up what we have on the agenda. And because we have a bunch of other stuff going on this month, decided not to do a back to basics. We'll return with a back to basics in January.